this mic is cutting in and out. Maybe not. Okay, well, the um, after two weeks of no chimes, <laughs> and I was like, eh, it's fine. Zach, you can go ahead. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. For those of you who are joining us online, welcome. We're glad you're with us today. Our service begins on page two of your bulletin with the acclamation. Blessed be our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the song of praise. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, forever, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Hester. The king and Haman went into feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he? And where is he? Who, is, who has presumed to do this? Esther said, a foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. 
Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and also the 15th day of the same month, year by year, as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 124 alternately at the verse. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, Then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said to him, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after afterward to speak evil of me whoever is not against us is for us for truly I tell you whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where the worm di never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, take our minds and think through them, take our hands and work through them, take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Please have a seat. So that's a really fun gospel, and there's a lot that we could say about it, but I'm going to say nothing about it today. Um, but it's a great reason to join us on our Thursday afternoon or Thursday noontime Bible study because um, we delved into that great. Because today we actually get a very rare treat, a lectionary reading from the book of Esther. It is, in fact, the only time that we read from the book of Ex Esther in an, our entire lectionary cycle, um, which is a shame because it's actually a really riveting tale. 
The snippet we read today from Esther's book only makes sense to us from what we can gather from the very uh, parse, uh, very uh, small context that there is. And if you notice on your lectionary insert page, we skip around and jump to a lot of verses leaving some things out. But what we can kind of suss out is that it appears that the villain was exposed and the king executed some kind of justice and Esther's people, who we come to understand as the Jews in exile, are saved by some heroic action that she's done. Although, does it really even look heroic? But there's a whole lot going on in the story that actually gets us to this point. And to truly understand it, we need to back up to the beginning. So buckle up, because this is a tale as old as time, and I'm going to give you an elevator pitch for the entire book of Esther. And the first thing you need to know is that Esther was not King Esoharis' first wife. That honor was held by Queen Vashti. As our story begins in the book of Esther, the king of Persia is throwing a lavish feast that lasts 180 days. And then, because why not, he decides to extend it for another week, this time at his winter palace in Susa. And as if that 180 days were not enough to tell us about his self-indulgent tastes and his hedonistic appetite, the entire first chapter narrates the opulence of this winter palace and the abundance of food and alcohol flowing freely. Almost as a side note, we are told that Queen Vashti gave a separate banquet for the women of the kingdom as the king's was only for his officials, his ministers, the nobles, the governors, and the army leaders. <clears throat> so on the last day of that seven-day feast, in the courtyard of the king, things took a body turn. We're not given full details, though one biblical scholar puts it aptly saying that at the end of this drunken week, the men began to tell tales reminiscing about the women they had known, which invariably turned into a competition. And leading the pack was, of course, the, qu the king. All other women, he waged, paled in comparison to his wife, Queen Vashti. And to prove his point, he dispatched seven trusted eunuchs to the queen to bring, to bring the queen to him immediately. And here the Hebrew is a little vague, but it implies that they are to bring the queen to him adorned in just her royal crown so he could show her off. Chapter um, 1, verse 12 tells us, but Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command. And at this, the king was enraged and his anger burned within him. Now, it's not recorded why Queen Vashti refused to come, but she must have known that there would be fallout for refusing, that her life may very well be upended, for she had defied the king in a very, very public manner. And the king, in his anger and embarrassment, consulted with his sages, seeking their advice on what he should do. And what did his sages say? Well, beginning in chapter 1, verse 15, they outlined the case for deposing Vashti as queen to make an example of her. Not only has Queen Vashti done wrong to the king, but also to all the officials and all the peoples who are in the provinces of King Asoharis. For this deed of the queen will be made known to all women, causing them to look with contempt on their husbands, since they will say, well, King Asoharis commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. This very day, the noble ladies of Persia and Medea, who have heard of the queen's behavior, will rebel against the king's officials, and there will be no end of contempt and wrath. Vashti was forsaken, and the king went on to hunt for a new wife. And with the help of those very same advisors, he held, this is, I kid you not, read the book of Esther, he held what is essentially sort of an ancient beauty pageant, looking for a younger and even more beautiful wife than Vashti, perhaps expecting one less willful too, now that the example had been made of the former queen. And here's where Esther enters the story. She was an orphan who had been taken in by her cousin Mordecai, who worked at the king's citadel. 
They were fourth generation Jewish exiles in Persia. So they were pretty distant from that wrenching exile from Jerusalem, but they were still holding on to their sense of their Jewish identity. Now Esther, because of her beauty, was taken into the harem of potential wives for the king. And when it was her turn to meet him, he loved her best because um, of her beauty and made her his queen. The story continues with quite a bit more court intrigue. Mordecai discovered a plot to kill the king. He tells Esther. She tells the king the plot is thwarted. And then there's Haman, who advanced in the king's court until his power surpassed everyone except the king. Everyone bowed down before Haman as if he were the king, except for one person, Mordecai. And Haman was furious about this. And when he found out that Mordecai was a Jew, he began to plot to destroy all the Jews in the kingdom as retribution. As you might have guessed from that earlier partying and debauchery and relying on others to tell him what to do, King Asuharis was not the most hands-on ruler. So when Haman came to him, telling him of this people in his kingdom who were different and who didn't keep the king's laws, but instead the laws of their own god, the king supported Haman in his plan to eradicate the Jews and left him to it. Esther, at Mordecai's earlier direction, had actually hidden her Jewish identity from the king. But now, as Mordecai learned of Haman's plan, he told her to go to the king in supplication for her people. If only it were so simple. To go to the king's inner court without an invitation was a death sentence per the law of the kingdom. And so she would have to stand at the entrance, which was still a breach of conduct, and hope that he invited her in and then hope that he listened to her plea. If he didn't, she had a very big choice to make. So Esther put on her crown and her royal robes, and she stood at the entrance to the king's court. The irony of his first queen refusing to come when being called, and she herself now showing up without being summoned, could not have been lost on her. But there she stood, and when the king saw her, he lifted his golden scepter and bid her to enter. Whew, that first hurdle was passed. Now, we can never know, but I can't help but wonder if perhaps Vashti's earlier independence somehow paved that path a little smoother and made Esther's boldness perhaps a little more acceptable. And here's where our story actually picks up today with Esther's courage in saving her people and Haman's grisly end. So there is so much from this story that we can learn from that helps us make sense of our lives today. Certainly the role of power and gender as they bump up against our own national dialogue about how women have been dispro disproportionately affected by job loss throughout the pandemic the burden of unpaid labor in the home, and medical autonomy. But the thing that I always come back to in this story of Esther is that her story is not simply her own. Her story is Vashti's story too. By including Vashti's story in her memoir, because that's what this book of scripture is, it is her memoir, she shows us that we have a responsibility to one another to listen to each other and to remember each other. Each of us here, men and women, have stories that have shaped us for good or for ill. There are people whose stories are the building blocks that have gotten us to where we are now and have informed the choices that we have made. Former presiding bishop K Catherine Jes Jeffert Shorey, pardon me, once spoke about the heresy of Western Christianity's focus on the individual, calling it a form of idolatry. The myth that we can make it on our own as if we don't benefit from the structures and the labor of those who came before us, as if salvation is an individual pursuit, 
just each of us getting right with God on our own. But the story of Esther and Vashti, Vashti shows us clearly that we belong to each other, that we are connected in powerful ways that are often beyond our control, and that salvation is found in God working through us together. Through Vashti and Esther, the Jews were saved from annihilation under the reign of King Asuharis. And I believe that it is through telling and listening to each other's stories here and now that we have the power to overcome the division facing our country. Because just like when you darn a sock, does anyone do that anymore? But just like when you darn a sock or mend a hole in the knee of your pants and you take that new thread and you weave it together with the stitches that have pulled apart. When we each speak our truth in love to one another, when we listen to that truth with love from others, and we seek a connection with them, God will work through us. The spirit will weave us together, and together we will be stronger. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us affirm our faith with the words of the, of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the church universal, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. May we be faithful to God's word. Hear us, O God. Thy mercy is great. For the well-being of creation, for those who work in the fields, for seasonable weather, and for the equitable sharing of the fruits of the earth. Hear us, O God. For peace and justice in the world, and for those in authority, May we all work for the common good. Hear us, O God. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, and lonely, let us be beacons of God's love and compassion to bring them comfort. Hear us, O God. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may they know God's presence in their distress. Hear us, O oh God. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, which you are invited to name silently or aloud.
into your hand, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, everyone. Feel free to take a seat and welcome. It is really great to see everyone today. A few things I want to just note these absolutely gorgeous altar flowers that we have today. Um, these were given to us by the family of Mary Ellen Thompson. Um, as you may know, we had her memorial service yesterday, and so they um, wanted to have this arrangement for us to enjoy today. So thank you to them. A huge thank you to all of you who helped out with basket raffle over the last couple of days, loading things up on Friday night, setting up, working um, the booths at the Oktoberfest yesterday, coming back and resetting it up tonight. Um, so many folks contributed. Let me pull up the text from Maryland because I have very inspe specific instructions for what I'm supposed to announce today. <laughs> okay, let's see. First of all, huge thank you to everyone. Second of all, there are seven cash and carry baskets left and the prices have been reduced, so check those out. Also, your last chance to bid on silent auction items is today. Bids close at 1 p.m. And if anyone has an hour or two tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m., and would like to um, help pull the winning tickets and start to make phone calls, uh, they, can always, they can use a couple more people as well. There's even a script. In case making phone calls makes you nervous, there's a script to follow to make the phone calls. So um, just let me know if you're interested or show up uh, tomorrow at 9. Okay. So thank you again for all of that. And we are still selling basket raffle tickets upstairs in the church. And as I said, silent auction is open until 1. And then the last two announcements are just a couple of upcoming events, next Sunday and the Sunday after. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating the Feast of St. Michael, who is the patron saint of police officers. And so we will be offering a blessing for police officers. And then on the 10th, we will be celebrating the Feast of St. Francis with our pet blessing which is going to be so much fun because it'll be outside. Fingers crossed for good weather. Um, so as always, um, pets are always welcome, but on that day in particular, we will offer special blessings. And um, so bring all your pets, and we will have a great time. Are there any Thanksgivings of the community, ways that we can celebrate and share with you today? Okay. God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them.
May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. Glory to you forever and ever. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill, and you made us stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again, you call us to return. Through prophets and sages, you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, born of a woman, to be our savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death, he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for sending us Jesus the Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, said, take Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Glory to you forever and ever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, we recall the death of your son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and we look with expectation for his coming as Lord of the nations. We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the spirit now bring you these gifts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this offering of your church that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the divine life of Christ our Lord. Pour pour out your spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom where peace and justice are revealed, that we with all your people of every language, race, and nation may share the banquet you have promised. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people. In just a moment, our usher will invite you to come forward to receive communion. At this time, we are still only receiving communion in one kind. We have wafers in individual cups for you to come up and take and then uh, return to your seat before consuming the sacrament. If you have a gluten allergy, we do have some gluten-free wafers. They are a darker tan color and will be off to the side. 
And my standard weekly reminder that the wafers are the exact same color as the cups, but I promise if you take a cup, you will get communion. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.